Hi right, folks, how you doing? I thought I'd talk about uh, symbols. I guess something that we're all familiar with, symbols. You know, they carry a message. Okay, and they're very helpful in the realm of spirituality. We talk about how symbols can uh, help to advance understanding and spiritual progress. Okay. So we'll take a few symbols you know, uh, to explain this. And uh, we'll take uh, in the uh, from the Kimite mythology, we'll take a scepter. You know, the scepter is the thing that they, you know, the gods hold in their hand, you know, different types of scepters. And one of them is called uh, the Was, U-A-S. It, it is also better known as the, uh, the ass-headed scepter. Ass meaning donkey. So it's the ass-headed scepter. Now, this scepter has uh, an ass's head, the head of the ass, the donkey, okay? And along the side of uh, the head, okay, is a feather, okay? And the feather, uh, these feathers represent, uh, quite often, most of the time, uh, shade and light. Okay. The dark side and the light side. Okay. So now, but this feather also has, uh, excuse me, the scepter, also has uh, at the bottom a, a split. It's a staff, and at the bottom it splits. The bifurcation, it splits, like so. And it, uh, this has to do with, uh, uh, breathing. And it has to do with, uh, magnetic and electric energy. Okay. When we breathe, okay, uh, we, uh, send energy down to our lungs if we inhale down to our lungs and so forth and through the bloodstream and through our body, which has an effect on the electric current within our body. And when we exhale, it's the same thing. It has an effect on, okay, uh, the electrical currents in our body. Okay. So now, here at the bottom of this scepter, we have what you call a spark gap, where the energy, the electrical uh, uh, electrical energy and the magnetic energy comes together. It comes together, and th this shaft now, this was, okay, we can view as the spinal canal that runs up our back. But also, we have nerve plexus along the spinal column in our back. These nerve plexus feed energy to the organs of the body, that is, the parasympathetic gland, okay? Uh, this nervous energy from the parasympathetic sends uh, energy to the organs of the body, okay? But doing a breathing exercise, okay, spiritual breathing exercise, that is rhythmic, regulated breathing with retentions of the breath, etc. We want to send this energy at the bottom of the spinal canal up through the, uh, the uh, spinal canal. And as it goes up the spinal canal, we stop it at would say uh, the nerve plexus, they call them the chakra. 
And when we stop this energy that we're sending up there, we gather the energy from uh, the first nerve plexus. And we go up to the next one, and we gather energy from there. As we do this here, the energy that we, what we're sending up the spinal canal builds up, becomes more powerful. And we go to the next plexus and the next plexus, and we take this energy, eventually, sending it to the brain. And it awakens the pineal gland. And it awakens the whole brain, actually. Because we're sending all this electrical energy to the brain. Energy that was designated to go from the parasympathetic system over to the, uh, the organs of the body. But we have, wait a minute, we have interfered with this and we start sending the energy up from the plexus up to the brain instead of to the organs of the body. This is why some of the people who practice yoga, maybe advanced folks, when they go into a trance, etc., the body cools off tremendously and the brain warms because we have taken the energy from the uh, organs of the body and sent it up the spinal canal to the brain. And this gives us an awakening. So this is, this is we, it just has to do with the wasp scepter. Now, while all this is going on, we are doing rhythmical breathing, regulated breathing, deep breathing exercises when this is going on, because it is these breathings that help us send this electrical energy up from plexus to plexus to plexus to the brain, along with our imagination, of course. We can imagine these things occurring. Now, the wasp scepter symbolizes this. So when we're doing this operation, we can use the symbol, the wasp. We can use this symbol when we are conducting this operation, sending this energy up through the spinal canal. We can focus on the symbol. You see, to help us complete this operation. Now, the feather, which we said is uh, shade and light, has to do with, okay, the intake and breath of energy, the inhale, and the light part which has to do with the exhale of energy, which we can use during this operation. You see? So we can imagine we can imagine the feather separately, or we can imagine the whole thing, the whole scepter, and what's going on as we raise this energy up. They say a picture is worth more than a thousand words. So if you understand the symbolism, you advance yourself further, you advance your understanding further through the symbol than by reading. They say a symbol, I mean a picture, they say the, the symbol is a picture. We see it, we can focus our imagination, focus it in our heads, you know. So, okay, they say a picture is worth more than a thousand words. So, the symbol will help us tremendously when it comes to un a reading, understanding, and making spiritual progress that we find in the scriptures, no matter what religion you belong to. It doesn't matter the religion, it's the scripture that we're concerned about, what it's saying to us. We're concerned about understanding the scripture, etc. You see? So this is a symbol that helps us. Now, uh, this is uh, the Kimite tradition. The was is a, a symbol used by uh, the Kimites, the ancient Egyptians. But now we would talk about, uh, we'll take something from the Christian tradition. So we see uh, Jesus on the cross, okay? Now, he has two thieves or two criminals, one on his left, one on his right. 
one symbol, uh, one thief, renounced Jesus. The other symbol, the other uh, thief, I should say, uh, accepted what uh, Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. So Jesus told the one on the left, well, you, you know, you won't be with the Father in hell. In other words, he's going to hell or to the underworld. And the other uh, uh, thief, he said that he would be with him in heaven. Okay, well, the, the symbol, the guy on the, on, the, on the left is the in-breath that takes energy down to the body, down here to the underworld. <laughs> the guy or the thief on the right has to do with the exhale that comes up and brings the soul of God with it. So it's going up to heaven with each exhaling breath goes up, bringing the soul of God up. Jesus is, is the soul of God, okay? So, so Jesus favored the guy who was going up to heaven. Both breaths, though, it doesn't mean that one breath is bad and the other one is. They're both good. They're both unnecessary. Of course, we know that. Okay? So we see now, okay, we see the similarity between um, the wasp scepter and uh, Jesus on the cross with the two thieves, one on each side. You see what I mean? The principle is the same. Even though the symbols appear, of course, differently, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, the meaning, the meaning is the same. It is raising the energy, or we can call it our life force, up to the brain, which awakens the brain, which is heaven. When we, when folks awaken the brain with this gush of energy going to the brain, it's like heaven, you see. And we also have uh, the symbolism in the Kimite tradition. We have uh, uh, the wachetti, that is uh, the watchet and the nekabet. Watchet and nekabet. Watchet is the serpent, and nekabet is the vulture that we see on the uh, on the on the Ure Ureus. These have to do with uh, uh, repelling energy or repelling uh, that which is bad for us and accepting that which is good for us. To bring in is magnetic. To repel, to go out is the electrical, the electrical energy. So we have electromagnetic energy at work for us, okay? especially when we raise up this energy from the lower regions up to the, the heaven aspect, which sets these two symbols, uh, let's say, uh, into action, you see. So these symbols can be used through our imagination when Let's say spiritual exercises are being conducted by by the individual, us or whoever. You see, so symbolism is important once it's understood, and symbolism is even more important when you can when it can be used. Okay, to advance your spiritual understanding and progress, understanding the symbols. You'll see that, uh, or people will see, that this symbolism applies to all religions. No matter which religion it is picked up in or where it's learned from, it applies to all religious scriptures, which teach these very things, all of them. Understanding the religious scriptures is the key, and symbolism helps us do this. It doesn't matter the religion. They all tell the same thing. They all 
All the scriptures come from the same source, the Kimite mythology. Okay, folks, I hope you found some interest in that. And subscribe. I have a lot more to talk about. To make more comparisons to uh, the various religions with the Kimite uh, mythology. Uh, as we did just now. With this video. And so, uh, subscribe. Subscribe. You see. And, uh... I'll get back with you. I have a lot more, to, a lot more to talk about, and I'm sure what I have to say will be interesting and enlightening when it comes to the scriptures. You see what I mean? And how they can be pre, uh, compared, and how the scriptures can uh, be understood through the use of symbols. The symbols are all throughout the, the religious scriptures, and that's why they're important to understanding the scriptures. Okay, thank you very much, and subscribe, and I'll be looking forward to uh, talking to you folks again. All right, bye.